When you're only ever used to finding something hard, occasionally it's nice to play with something soft. You can get your mind out of the gutter, because it's a weird science fact that boggles my mind. No one appreciates a good bone more than a paleontologist. But the reality is, the paleontologists don't really unearth buried bones. They dig up rocks that look like bones. The process of fossilization is when minerals replace biological material and medusa the bones to stone. So while a fossil maintains the shape of the original bone, it has, quite literally, turned to rock. And while we're lucky that biological material like bones turned to stone because it allows us to study things we would have never even have known existed without them, and it allows us to better understand where we came from in the process of evolution and how species that once ruled the earth one day disappeared from it the next. Unfortunately, there's only so much you can learn about a once living, breathing animal from its bone-shaped stones. But you gotta work with what you have, and unfortunately, soft tissue in the absolute best of conditions can last maybe a million years, which usually comes up 65 to a few hundred million years short of the species we'd like to learn a little bit more about. Or so we thought. Because back in 2005, a paleontologist in Montana found a really well-preserved T-Rex fossil, and she took its leg and did the unthinkable. She broke it on purpose, and then dissolved pieces of it in acid. Which is horrifying to my nine-year-old aspiring paleontologist heart. But she did it on a hunch that perhaps there was some preserved soft tissue inside of this well-preserved fossil. Now, for most paleontologists and biologists, that was a ridiculous notion. She was destroying a rare and precious fossil to find 65 million year old soft tissue that could have only lasted a million years. That was the reason nobody ever looked for it before. But it turns out in defiance of science, her rock hard bones had a soft inside. She found structures of blood vessels and entire cells that were still flexible. And since then, more soft tissue has been found in other fossils. This is helping scientists learn about how dino cardiovascular systems works, if they were cold blooded or warm blooded or neither or both. They found stronger evolutionary links to birds, which evolved from dinosaurs, and this has the promise of many more great discoveries to come. But it would take another decade for scientists to form a hypothesis on how the soft tissue survived 65 to a few hundred times longer than it should have. That looks like iron is the answer, because it turns out you're an iron man, or iron woman, and I'm an iron man, and most living things are iron things. See, our bodies contain lots of iron, which it uses for lots of things, partially because it's highly reactive. But because it's highly reactive, your body keeps all of its iron molecules locked up tight and only allows it to react with the things that it wants it to react with. But when something dies, its body can't keep it caged anymore and the iron breaks free of its irons. As the iron makes its jailbreak, it generates highly reactive molecules called free radicals, which causes the proteins in soft tissue to twist and tie into knots, basically doing the same thing formaldehyde does. So in situations like with the Montana T-Rex, a fossil can be buried very quickly. That's why the fossil was so complete and its bones weren't scattered around, being pulled around by scavengers or water washing away in a river, and it was rapidly buried in sandstone, which is porous, and wicks moisture away, which kept bacteria from eating away at the soft tissue. Situations like that, apparently the foe formaldehyde created from iron can preserve soft tissue for much, much longer than ever thought possible. And the fact that big bones from brilliant bygone beasts have managed to bottle up bits of blood from the land before time, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.